single player, I'm the brand manager for the new software on BWI. I would like to use the next 25 to 30 minutes to give you detailed information about the strategy behind our new subbrand. And last but not least, of course, I would like to give you a lot of information why BW decided to launch a new subbrand. Because when we talk about subbrand, what we mean is not just a different product line. We said we go one step further and we want to create something bigger. When you want to create something bigger, it's very important that you have a lot of, let's say, value in your communication and in your product. This is exactly what I would like to show you now. So, of course, we talk about a few completely new products, but then again, and you will hear a lot in the following presentations, we talk about extremely new materials, like, for example, the carbon fiber, which uh, this is the material these two cars are manufactured from. The new drive trains, of course, is about electric cars, but also about hybrid cars. And then it comes to the production. And also here we have more information uh, that we would like to give to you what we did different here, what we were facing when it comes to how we would produce these cars. The mobility services, which means mobility for people that perhaps don't even have a car or perhaps they don't want to drive a car. And new sales concepts wherever they are relevant. The next point is the new premium. And this is a point that is very important because when you know BW and our customers, it's a more traditional understanding of premium. But in the last years, we did some market research. And I would like to give you an example about what we call now. In a city like San Francisco, for example, there are people living in houses with a value of five million dollars. And in the so-called perfect marketing world, what we expect in front of these houses is, for example, a big BW or a big Mercedes or a big Porsche car. But in many of these houses, for example, in San Francisco, we saw that these people are driving a car like a Toyota Prius. And in the marketing world, that's a car with a price tag of around 35,000 euros does not go together with a house that is worth five million dollars. But these people decided to buy this product, and they would have a lot of money to buy more expensive products. And we were understanding that the world is kind of slightly changing here a little bit. It might be just the beginning, but this will be uh, the direction as we think will go for the next years. And this is what we call the next premium approach. The new subbrand is a strategic decision. And the strategy, of course, means that the W in the future, as we said in the past, we want to grow, making profit by growing. And this, in the end, does not just mean to launch new and new versions of the W, a sub-brand can help us to reach new target groups, new customers. That means the sub-brand has the freedom to address new customers in a way that normally we would not do with the BMW commercial brand. That means the sub-brand is a very, very important part for us when it goes into the future and the profitable growth of this company. So in essence, the BMW sub-brand stands for three things. And when it comes to the communication and the market, Card, it's very important for us to address these three things very clearly. As we think that the world is getting more and more complicated, we know that the message needs to be very, very easy and easy to understand for the customer. So first of all, BWI stands for the visionary mobility, so the mobility of the future. And what we see here is future, but it's not far away, because as you probably heard, we are going to launch with it the next already, but visionary mobility does not just mean, for example, two new cars, it also means mobility services, and I will tell you more about this field in a few seconds. The second part is the inspiring design, and I'm the marketing guy, so I will not talk too much about the inspiring design, because we have an expert here who will tell you a lot more about the design and the philosophy and the design of these cars. But the next premium has also 
already explained by the example of Macau in California. It's one of the essential parts because we think that with the new sovereign, we want to target the new premium customer of the future. And in some of the countries, there is already a target group that is buying a lot of premium future products, and some markets are just developing. But again, we know that this is the growth and the potential for the future. When it comes to sovereigns, you can be in W. This business is not really new to us. We have a lot of experience. And you see here on the left hand side what I mean, because there is already a sub-brand within the BMW group. The sub-brand BMWM. And a sub-brand is always taking a very special angle to a brand. And for the BMWM sub-brand, of course, it's the performance. You know about cars like the M3, where the performance is the key factor of the success, and this is the DNA that people want. And that is a core. You have to be a W brand with all the products you know. And now, on the right hand side, we added a second sub brand, the sub brand BMWI. And where you have a focus on the left hand side of performance, now we have another sub brand on the right hand side with a focus on efficiency and sustainability. And what you see in the end is a perfect balance because we have the parental brand in the center, and we have two sub brands on the left and on the right hand side. And obviously, depending on the need of the market, meaning depending on how developed the market is regarding the, the wish to buy sustainable products, we can communicate more on the right hand or on the left hand side. Now, I would like to talk to you about something we call USBs. That means these are the things we take the communication because we just do them different and much better as we think than other brands and other manufacturers. So this is the big process of the BWI subbrand. So let's start on the upper left hand side, and this is the car architecture. Both cars, as you see them here to the left and the right, are built on a very special and very new car architecture. And my colleague Manuel will tell you more about what the structure and the architecture is all about. And there is also more information in this installation where you can learn a little bit about what our engineers were developing here and why it's so different and special and different to other cars. The second part is the holistic capability. When you launch electric cars like the i3 here, you cannot just give it to the customer and say, now you have an electric car. The next question is right away, where do I plug it in? So where do I get my electricity from? And much more. Or what happens if I run out of battery and I can't drive anymore? That means we have to give a lot of answers to the holistic approach and the needs of customers who want to drive an electric car. Car. That's the second car. Then the BMW e drive. You can imagine that when BMW decides to launch an electric car, the electric car will still be a car that will be fun to drive because the core of the BMW brand is the sheer driving pleasure. And not just this car, also of course the i3 will provide driving pleasure. There will never be a BMW produced from our company that will not provide fun. Because this is the core of our brand. And with electric cars, there are some prejudices where people understand that they are kind of sustainable, but they are not fun to drive. But we say that every BMW carrying this logo is fun to drive. And this is what BMW e drive uh, as just one example means. That means the engine is the heart of the car is a BMW development. And e drive is our name for this technology. Mobility services, as I will tell you in two seconds, and of course, the holistic sustainable approach. Sustainability does not mean you launch an electric car. There's a lot more behind it. How are you producing your products? Where do you get your materials from? And so on. You have to look into the entire value chain and you have to make sure that all you do is of sustainable nature. Otherwise, the story is too weak. The carbon fiber. I hope you heard already that we, for the first time, will produce cars in the mass production where the car body is produced out of carbon fiber. And 
when you ask yourself why are we doing that, then this is very easy to answer because the carbon fiber is much lighter than steel or aluminium. And by the way, it's a very solid material, so it's also uh, very good when it comes to effects like safety and crash impacts. Why do we need a light car? Of course, because we have like battery weight which goes in the car, which normally we don't have to change. That means we have to carry a battery which uh, carries some weight, and we have to compensate the weight, for example, by producing the car as light as any home model. The next premium and the next premium design will be a lot more from my colleague and himself. And the second and of course connectivity um, and I'm sure especially for your market this is, as you're very developed here this is very important that the car can, you, can communicate with the world around you um, and support you here. We have the i3 and we have the i8 and we decided to do that to show from the very beginning that the new subframe is not a so-called one-hit wonder. It's not just one electric car. We show from the very beginning that even when it comes to sustainable mobility and sustainable cars, it can be a very sported car and also it can be all electric like the i3. And from the nomenclature with the figures 3 to 8, we already showed that there would be space in between for future products underneath the 3 or even above the 8. Mobility services. Also, as a matter of fact and research, we found out that in some of the countries and markets all over the world, for example, the kids or the teenagers when they turn 18 are not interested anymore in making a driver's license or spend a lot of money on buying a car. In some of the countries, education gets more and more expensive, or you have to invest more money in health, or you want to invest more money in private traveling. So, but still, these people, they need mobility every day. We want to talk to these people every day. So we look at our services that will help the future customers to stay mobile, even if they decide not to purchase a car, but once in a while, perhaps they need one. And this is where we want to help out. So, after that, we thought about, for example, programs like a new car sharing program, or car like all the challenges of the mobility solutions of the future. And what we did at the end is we bundled with competencies in the market, for example, with a venture capital fund that is based in New York City, where then people Last but not least, and this is a very tricky question, who is the customer? So, who is the customer, for example, of these cars? When we come to the i8, we know that the customer will be very much what we know today from a sports car customer. Because the car is driving and getting really like a sports car. But then again, it's for an audience that wants the latest kind of technology available in the market. As for example here, with a car that drives like a sports car, with a combustion level of a tiny or a small car. And this is what the customer of the IA will appreciate. On the right hand side, it's a little bit more difficult because, and this is what you see behind me, we have two target and customer groups. On the left hand side, we have the so-called responsible target groups. So the customers who decide to drive an electric car, they want to be good to the environment. As you see from the age, they are 45 years or more, perhaps they have a little family, and they understood the circle of life and that we have to change things. And this is a person who wants to drive and act responsible. So the motivation comes from inside, it's intrinsic. On the right hand side, you have the customer who will decide to buy an electric car because it's pretty cool to drive an electric car as much as 
good it is to have the latest iPhone or the latest iPad, like all the people who want to buy the latest gadgets to show the environment and their friends that they know what the latest edge and technology is all about. But as you see and understand, the customer on the right hand side does not want to change the world. This is a customer who is more working on his or her own image. That means buying products more like a prestige object to work on your own brand or your own image. And for us in the communication, it's of course a challenge, but it's doable to feed those customers on the left hand side a responsible target group that wants to drive electric cars to do something positive to the world. And on the right hand side, of course, a customer who wants the latest gadgets for the old image uh, and to show how modern uh, and edgy the individual person in the end is. This already brought me to the end of my presentation. Certainly, I'm with you for the rest of the day for individual questions um, also after the, after the presentation is now. Before I hand over to my colleague Manuel Satich, who will tell you a little bit more about the technology and the uh, engineering expertise behind these cars, I would like to show you uh, the first movie which was produced with the BW IA Spider concept. Perhaps you know that this car it was just having the world premiere at the Beijing Motor Show in China and we brought it right here. So this is like the hottest and the newest kit on the block in the BW uh, I family. And yeah, I would like to show you um, how it drives and because we cannot drive together, I'm sorry that we have to do that uh, in the form of a little film, but so far I wish you fun and enjoy.